This is the instruction video for the BBJ Sim Racing 12 switch button box and in it I'm going to be taking you through setting up the box and using multiple boxes. There really isn't much to it but if you've never considered adding a button box to your rig this will show you how easy it is and hopefully how useful a button box can be. I'm not going to spend much time on physically installing the box as we've covered this in another video. So without further delay let me hand you over to me. Hi I'm John High from BBJ Sim Racing and I'm going to go through today setting up one of my small 12 button boxes as an additional box on my rig. Uh, I've already mounted the box on a piece of wood, I've left the space for it when I was making the 22 button box video so it's glued underneath the uh, underneath the bigger box as you can see here. <coughs> I haven't plugged it in yet so I'm going to do that now and it won't make any auto detect noises because um, it's not got any speakers connected to it this, this computer but it has already found it and installed it in the time that I've moved a couple of things so what I'm going to do is, same as we did in the other video, is go to the test so we'll go control panel devices and printers and we can see that I've got a whole bunch of input devices for iRacing on this computer now and basically you can keep adding as many as you, as you want so three of these are my button boxes so that is the 22 button box and then there's two 12 bo button boxes that come up as generic USB joystick so obviously I don't know which one it is but bring up the screen and we'll soon see nope that's the old one so double click on the other generic USB joystick and we can test the box we've just installed so let's just go through the buttons I mean I know it works because I've built it but I find it's a good idea to do this rather than get into some massive troubleshooting situation when all it is it's not plugged in or something stupid like that so anyway that's fine so let's go ahead and launch iRacing and we can get it set up now what I'm going to do with this box is the box you can see above it this is my rain racing box this has got all the car setup adjustments on it and all my in stuff the box on the other side which you can't see in this video is basically a radio box so I've got all my radio and spotter controls there so they're all in one place together nice and easy to deal with and this new box I'm going to assign all the replay controls to it the reason I'm doing this is because basically I stream a lot and I can actually hear people getting bored through the internet as I faff around with the mouse controls scrolling backwards and forwards through replays. All the slick streamers have some level of automation on their replay control so uh, I'm going to go the same way and I'm going to assign them to this button box. So we need to go to a track ok so I'm at the track I'm just going to open the options tab go to controls and scroll down to the replay controls which is where you want to be so I'm just going to go through and assign the buttons that I want I've just got a little list here so the ones I'm going to want are play and pause which is one button stop fast forward 
rewind. Right, I'm going to come back to slow motion because I want the obvious pairs to sit together. So next one I'm going to assign now is going to be next lap and then previous lap so here we can have next instant previous instant these are vital buttons if you want to do uh, carnage reports at the end of your races because you can set the replay to look for instance incidents and then you can just scroll through quickly without having to find everything in the replay it's going to save me a lot of time doing this so I haven't labelled these how many have I right so the next one I want to have up is next car Obviously these are handy buttons so you can just scroll from one car to another. Previous car and my car. So I just run it back to my car and the final one I go back to is slow motion. So you just hit slow motion in one one button press rather than several mouse presses and hunting around. So that's it. That is done. So I'm going to go away and uh, label all these buttons up before I forget what they are. Uh, I'm going to label it up with my label making machine. Uh, I did make some labels up on the little labels that I include in with the boxes. Uh, but I thought if I stick these on I'm only going to have to take them off again I just wanted to show show you that there are some labels there to get you started so uh, you can certainly have something to label your buttons until you can get something more proper sorted out uh, ok so I'm going to go away and do that and then we'll just come back and have a look at some replays being manipulated I've labelled up the button box and uh, I'm just loading a replay now we can check it all see yeah see if it's working properly yeah I'll just show you my uh, labeling machine this one's made by brother uh, but I think lots of companies make similar labeling machines very cheap to buy and uh, you end up with a nice result on your button boxes a nice professional professional looking thing So let's just hope it works, eh? After all this. I mean, I have every reason to suppose it will. This is a race from season three, a GT1 race from Daytona at night. So, we're hiding all the uh, mouse controls and we should be able to do most of what we want now from the button box. So play and pause, so it's playing, can we pause it? Yes we can, that's a good start. If we hit stop we're just going to come out of it, but for the sake of completeness let's do that. Okay. So, all the various degrees of fast forward, they all seem to be working. That must be 16 times. Four. 
rewind, pause. Slow mo, I can slow mo it right down. This is very cool, actually, I must admit. This is going to save me ages. So now we just swap over to the car transport so we can look at various cars around the track and keep the slow mo in. I like this. It actually pans the uh, pans the cameras across in slow mo as well. Anyway, get bored of looking at all the other cars, just press my car and you go straight back to your own car. So, that's the start. So if we change this to focus on crashes and far chase. Now hopefully we should be able to scot roll through and pick out the crashes. Maybe I'm overdoing the slow motion of it. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. This is cool, being able to do this without keep bringing up those horrible transport control bars. That's going to save me a lot of editing when I'm sticking things on YouTube. That's going to be a discipline. Because I tend to have to go through and edit out all the bits where the transport bars are, are sitting, you know what I mean. So let's see if it will go to the next incident. It doesn't look like there's much happening there. No, it is. I think this rain got, race got quite clean quite quickly. Let's try five first, there it goes. Apart from this race needing more incidents, I think that works fine. Okay, so there we have it. I think I can say that's a success. And that's going to make my streaming life a lot easier. Uh, I think we've shown it. You can join a load of these boxes together and they all work together without any problem at all, all seamless. So, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the track.